<laughs> so, uh, quick story about the, the labyrinth. Um, I've wanted one for a long, long time here at church. And it, it, some of it seemed overwhelming to figure out how to do it. And then when we went to Lake Junaluska, uh, me and John and Kenny and Lynn walked the labyrinth before we did worship planning just to pray for the church and for God's guidance. And it was in the lawn. And so I sent a text to Bonnie and Dean and said, stop making excuses. <laughs> <laughs> sort of as a joke. And uh, voila. <laughs> so I want to thank Yay! them. Yay! So church today uh, will dedicate two important symbols in our continued faith journey with one another. First, we'll, we'll dedicate the, the labyrinth walk, uh, and then our peace pole. First about the peace pole, it's a handcrafted monument that displays the message in prayer, may peace prevail on earth, in each uh, four or six sides, and ours has four sides, and in different languages. There are tens of thousands of peace poles in 180 countries all over the world dedicated as monuments to peace and they symbolize to us reminders for us to visualize and pray and work for world peace i'll share with you something from our peace poll and i read for you and with permission from roz hazi an email she sent me dear marcia I wanted to let you know that I've decided I won't be able to come to church next Sunday. As you know, I'm an exceptionally private person, and the thought of losing it in front of so many folks, many who I really don't know, is totally beyond my comfort level. Each Sunday that passes comes closer to the last Sunday that Herm and I were in church together, and then comes the hospital time, the tambark time, and then the time at home and his passing away all within 30 days. So I'm doing everything I know to grieve properly and stay healthy. So far, so good. Herm will be thrilled to have the peace pole planted. As long as it can be dug up when bluegrass moves to a new home. <laughs> Herm's 50, 75th birthday gift from me. And follow the beautiful history. We planted our first peace pole in Trinidad, Colorado when Herm was on the city council and I was the sponsor of the Kiwanis Middle School Club. The kids wanted a service project and the city wanted to beautify the local park, so the project was born. Herm and I then planted a poll in Danville at First Christian Church while working with the middle school youth group. The kids raised the money, planted a garden, and studied the possible language choices. It was a great effort. This poll that we donate to the church was at our home in Danville and was the subject of an article in the local paper and lots of notice by folks driving by our home. It then moved to Steamboat Road in Lexington and shared the curbside grassy area with our herb garden and near the little library. For those of you who don't know, Herman Roz had a little house outside their, their house and they filled it with books and invited people to take one and leave one. Ross continues, the language choices on this poll are English, needs no explanation, German, Herm's heritage, Hebrew, my heritage, and Vietnamese, a significant time of violence in our lives. If you Google Peace Poll, you can read more about the entire project. I cannot think of a less controversial concept. So plant in peace and enjoy and with love, Herm and I will be with you all in spirit. How thankful we are, not only for the peace pole, but for the significance it brings to us. It's for the Labyrinth Walk, I've shared with you before that upon landing in San Jose, California, some seven years ago to begin a 10 week student ministry for many reasons, when I landed in California, I knew that Dorothy was not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> that time was transformative in my personal faith journey. 
and the time in San Jose has impacted my ministry more than any experience in my life. In the last week of my time there, I was invited to join my newfound family of First Congregational Church in San Jose <coughs> as we led youth on a mountaintop labyrinth walk. I was very anxious because, to be honest, I had never even heard of a labyrinth, much less done one. It all seemed very strange to me, and it wasn't something I thought I'd find in a church. Baptists didn't do labyrinth walks. <laughs> I have to share with you, though, the walk that night became very meaningful to me. And it gave me the courage to return to Kentucky to a place where I was told I would never be ordained. And as well that night, I gained a deeper spiritual connection and really an uncanny insight to what would indeed come to fruition as related to my call to start a new church. All that was completely unbeknownst to me, but obviously known to God. It's my hope then that in the weeks and months ahead, it's my hope that we can journey together. Sometimes we'll find ourselves on this labyrinth as individuals. Sometimes we'll find our way here as a church family. But I hope that however and whenever we journey, whether scheduled or unscheduled, whether in groups or by ourselves. We can use this labyrinth as a guide for us to learn meditative walking and spiritual grounding, to have God-led journeys which give us insight and courage and hope and peace. We'll provide opportunities to learn more about labyrinths and the walks so that we can find that meaning and purpose for the times to just be, to just be with ourselves and with God. We give thanks then for these spiritual tools and look forward to what they will mean to us as church family. Let us pray. God, we're so thankful to have this community of faith where we each feel that we belong. And now as we extend outside the walls of our church into this neighborhood, we're thankful for these gifts of the Labyrinth Walk and of the Peace Pole. We're thankful for those who prepared it, for Dean and Bonnie, and for Pam who helped with the Labyrinth. We're thankful to our dear Herm, who we know lives now with you, and to Roz who lives with us, <coughs> for their donation of the Peace Pole. So God, as we come to this place, may we be reminded that we are connected with you and with each other. May we find in this space a place to get ourselves some relief from stress and distraction, from uncertainty and anxiousness. We pray that you'll be with us on our walks, on every walk, and that you will bless this sacred and holy ground and bless us in our efforts to seek a closer connection to you and each other. <laughs> so quite the walk, quite the journey, huh? As you can imagine if you're here, taking that at a very conscious, intentional, slower pace, the thoughts and prayers that you might lift up. To take this moment and Each moment in peace, Satan.